I remember as a kid being on a bus and smelling that diesel smell. I didn't like that. You know, I, I've seen people, it's like, oh, the kids aren't dying. Well, no, they're not dying right there, but you never know. You got kids with asthma and all kinds of other problems. Who knows? And maybe they have asthma because of the bus. So I think school buses make a very interesting play. A spot that's perfect for electrification. Charging costs them 37 cents per mile drive the bus compared to a buck 53. So that's a 75% savings, just what they would have spent on diesel. So never mind, you know, cleaning up the air, cleaning up the carbon, it definitely cleaning up the pocketbook. Hi, this is David with EV World News Mint Studio today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going, Bill? I am doing fabulous, sir. Thank you for asking. Yeah, well... Anyways, so um, we're going to talk about electric buses a little bit. And we've talked about electric buses in the past, both failures of manufacturing, you know, like we talked about Proterra. We talked a little bit about Bluebird before. We haven't really talked, I don't think we've ever talked about Thomas buses, but it, it seems like every bus manufacturer is getting into the EV space now. It, encouraged by federal grants and loans and things of that nature, yeah. I think school buses make a very interesting play because- it's not like you're going to drive a thousand miles that day on the school bus. They do drive a fair amount. There, there's no question. But it, it seems like a, a spot that's perfect for electrification. You know, you've got the kids on the bus. I remember some, as a kid being on a bus and smelling that diesel smell. I didn't like that. You know, you don't have air conditioning in those things. You got the windows open and the fumes are coming right back in. And you know, I, I've seen people, it's like, oh, the kids aren't dying. Well, no, they're not dying right there, but you never know. You got kids with asthma and all kinds of other problems. Who knows? And maybe they have asthma because of the bus, so. Yeah, you, you just never really know. Well, you know, I had, yeah, I did that story on uh, the ship hold, you know, the uh, study of the aircraft uh, operating or the schools and things that operate within sort of the flight path of the uh, Netherlands, you know, the Schiphol Airport, and they found that there was a direct link between the aircraft traffic moving in and out of the Schiphol Airport, you know, which is the airport for Amsterdam, and the, you know, the numbers of cases of asthma and things like that. So you got there, it, you know, it's jet fuel or diesel fuel. It's the same stuff. One's a little more refined than the other. But this stuff is instead of being dispersed, you know, 5,000 feet over the kids' heads, it's right there in, you know, in their uh, backpack, so to speak. So, yeah, you can see where there'd be a problem with it. Yeah, you know, sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not disputing that piece, but, you know, you've also got the issues of people who live near airports. They're typically in economically disadvantaged areas, too. And so you've got a couple of things. One, you've got noise pollution and the pollution from that. But on the flip side, the people in lesser advantaged areas generally may not take as good care of their health to start with. No, well, that can be taken. So you, it sort of exacerbates problems, you know? All right. I do not. I have been to the Netherlands long, long, long time ago, uh, briefly for a trip. But, uh, you know, I, I can't speak to the neighborhoods around the air, uh, ship hole. So if we have listeners that might be, you know, there in the Netherlands, I'd love to hear your comments about what do you consider those neighborhoods or those sort of typical, what we would say, disadvantaged communities, or are, you know, are they not? I mean, it'd be interesting to hear if there's a relationship to that. But but anyway, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting getting off talking flying as opposed to school buses, but uh, they, they're both running on fossil fuels, so. Yeah, you know, there's no question that, you know, we, we talk about this a lot uh, during the COVID years, or at least during 2020, you know, the skies over major cities cleared up and the air quality got better. There, there's no question. And that's what, and, you know, it's probably going to be 15 years before we see that complete effect from electric vehicles. Yeah, where that got demonstrated was the uh, Olympics in Atlanta. They limited the amount of commuter traffic and things in and around downtown Atlanta, or, you know, where the, the Olympics were held. And guess what? The numbers of asthma cases being reported to emergency rooms plummeted. So, you know, yeah, there's a link between all these pollutants, you know, and, and automobiles and coal and things like that we're burning and what happens to our air quality and what happens to our health. So that's why we want to get those kids out of those diesel buses 
and get them into electrics ex as expeditiously as possible. And that the administration is making that happen. Yeah. So I want to highlight some of the articles that we've had come up on this. Um, Fayetteville gets $6.6 million for electric buses and charging stations. I'm going to guess because electric buses are pretty expensive. I'm going to guess they probably are getting about eight buses, maybe. Oh, four battery electric buses, two additional charging stations, and two charging dispensers. I don't know what the charging dispensers means. Uh, I would, well, I would think that would be just another name for the EVSE, the electric vehicles, you know, charging stations. And there's a huge push within the, uh, uh, within the Biden administration to get funding out there for not only the manufacturer of the buses, $80 million going to, uh, going to Bluebird down in uh, Macon, Georgia. Uh, there's a, the company out in Phoenix, Phoenix EV, uh, uh, is uh, you know says it delivered five electric buses uh, to uh, the University of California. So you know there's all kinds of things that are happening in that. And that's we tend to always think about you know Teslas and Rivians and Ford Lightnings and and all of that. But uh, this this is a, just as important. In fact, in some respects, it may actually be a more effective way to get carbon emissions and things down. Plus. The added benefit when this is engineered right is to get the grid stabilization because those buses that take the kids to school in the morning, they come back to the central lot, they're plugged in, they're being charged very possibly by solar energy, you know, during the day. And then they unplug them and, you know, three o'clock, they're back out on the road for the next couple hours, you know, delivering kids at home, bring them back into the lot, they get charged in and now whatever extra electricity they may have or the grid might have at this point can be stored on them, and then that can be used to, uh, you know, to help stabilize uh, stabilize the grid. And these are not little battery packs of fifty to a hundred kilowatt hours. These are pretty sizable, uh, and can do a lot of good for for the grid as well as uh, for their kids' health. So this article here from Phoenix, a company called Phoenix EV, delivers five electric buses to a Cal University of California Irvine. Now, what I found was kind of interesting about this particular article. Now, um, California Irvine has actually had an electric fleet since January of 2018 and the first university in the U.S. to go all electric. They have 25 buses in its fleet, and they've logged almost 1.2 million miles. Bus ridership was almost 1.5 million people for last school year, while annually hitting 180, about 185,000 miles, averaging about 3,500 miles a week. But what was interesting is charging costs them 37 cents per mile to drive the bus compared to a buck 53. So that's a 75% savings, um, just what they would have spent on diesel. So never mind, you know, cleaning up the air, cleaning up the carbon. It definitely is cleaning up the pocketbook. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.